Jensen USA strikes again with its two-day shipping on this Marzocchi Z1 new for 2025 e-bike chassis. If you guys want to get your stuff super quick on time, definitely check out JensenUSA.com. So let's get to the Z1 and see what's new and what's different, what's better, what's worse. Inside the box, you're gonna get four tokens, the owner's manual, and some super cool stickers. Keeping with that theme of heavy duty and affordable, I am a huge fan of the Marzocchi. Marzocchi! Gotta say it like Hulk Hogan, remember? Brother. Here it is, 2025. Ooh! It looks pretty cool because we got that M arch, like all the new Marzocchi forks, and some of the older ones had a little bit of an M in there too. There's two new Z1s. One has the electric badge here and it promises a reinforced chassis, but if you watch this video, you know I'm gonna tell you the real deal because I got this Fox 36 Rhythm here to compare the new 25Z1 to. A quick sniff around the chassis of the 2025Z1. Well, it looks like we got some subtle improvements like some channeling in the lower legs for increased oil flow. So this is a 36 Rhythm, the OEM Fox fork, and it's basically an old Marzocchi Z1. And they are very, very similar. Now, that's not a bad thing, because that means that Marzocchi Fox got this right the first time. Well, it took me about five seconds to find the reinforcement. We have a thicker head crown on the new Z1 e-bike chassis. And I got a really excellent video excerpt from Vorsprung to explain why they would do this. So looking at this structure here, we've got two 38 millimeter stanchions. We have one 39.8 millimeter uh, OD steer tube here. When we're bending this, we're trying to bend the whole thing up like that. This is really the focal point of all the load, partly because it also has a headset race sitting here that it's levering against, all right? So this is really the weak link. To reinforce what Vorsprung just said, we're gonna take a look at the EXT era. Now we can see a reinforcement on the upper head crown because obviously they figured out this is the major flexing point too. And it's 2024 and Fox or Marzocchi has decided to reinforce that area as well. I'm really curious to ride this fork, but we gotta do all the nerdy stuff first. The Z1 weighs four pounds, 12 ounces. And if you're a metric guy, it's two kilograms, 175 grams. There is no weight benefit to running the newer Z1. As we can see, the Fox 36 Rhythm weighs identical. So your old Z1 is gonna weigh the same. So there's no reason to upgrade as far as weight goes. The new Z1 definitely has the cool factor as we compare them here. Maybe it's just placebo, but I think it's cooler. The new Z1 is definitely aiming at the entry level crowds with a dumbed down rebound adjuster. This is Marzocchi. Marzocchi's version of the Rock Chalk Yari Killer. And there's a new Yari out, I gotta look at that too, but this is definitely aimed at entry level people with that super easy use rebound adjuster. Inspecting under the rebound adjuster, it looks very similar to the old grip style. So I think you can unofficially drop a grip two or grip X inside of the new Z1. This is the new rail 2.0 damper and it feels very similar to the old grip style but it is a little bit maybe easier to use kind of cheaper material up there throwing the z1 up on the wall we can see that head crown is definitely even thicker than the fox 38. Since you're tuning into a nerd channel, we gotta take the fork apart. And if you've taken one Fox fork apart, they're all the same. But make sure you let the pressure out before you open the lower legs like I forgot to do here. It's early 2024, this product just came out. There's no official instructions, so I'm carefully taking it apart and trying to figure out what oil goes in the lower legs. So inside of each lower leg is 20 weight fox oil. And I'm thinking, did they assemble this right? Cause usually you have damper oil in the damper side, but there was definitely fox sticky 20 weight gold oil in both lower legs. But you gotta watch the video to find out why. 
The foam rings underneath the dust wipers look pretty standard and they're definitely soaked in 20 weight gold oil. So I do have some of that laying around so we can continue on. The air spring is held on with the old style clip, the one that's an absolute pain in the ass, but not super hard to take out. So let's take a look at what air spring is in the 2025 Z1. Upon close inspection, of about three seconds. This is a Fox 36 Rhythm air spring, the same air spring that was in the previous model Z1. We can see how much grease is in the negative volume chamber, and I'm sure Fox has good reason for this, but you can draw your own conclusions about how much grease is on the air spring. So I bought every single Fox 36 air spring on the market that you can physically buy to try to stuff it in this new Z1 because I was reading Reddit and there's just a lot of, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So what we have here is the Fox 36 Rhythm, the 2019 36 and the 2021 36 air spring. And we can see the negative volume chamber slowly increases in volume as the years go on. I have a quick tip for you. The 2019 and the 2021 have a wider diameter piston and they do not fit in the Marzocchi Z1 upper legs. This is kind of a way of Fox not allowing you to upgrade your fork for the new air spring, so you have to buy a new fork. I wouldn't blame them. I'd do the same thing if I owned Fox. So the Fox 36 Rhythm 160 air spring that it comes with is gonna go back in the fork after I clean up the grease. Now we've unmasked the air spring, it's time to take a look at the new damper. It's called the rail damper and it comes out like the old one. It's a 27 millimeter. So I'm going to assume it's very similar to the old damper, but I got some bad news. Now it's a very simple looking compression tube and there's no bleed hole inside this damper. And what makes Fox forks the best, most reliable forks on the market is their dampers self purge into the lower legs and they basically never have a problem. This will be the first sealed Fox damper I have ever held in my hand and I want you to take a listen to it. It sounds like air is inside of this damper from the factory, but it could be normal. So I did not take the compression tube apart because I cannot find the instructions, but I never give up that easy. So I'm scrolling on the internet late at night, looking for some directions on how to take this damper apart. And then I run into this. So everything on this fork looks identical to the new brand new Z1 e-bike chassis fork. And this is the repair manual for the Z2 fork. And Basically, they took the Z2 damper and dropped it into the Z1. Some additional research tells me this rail damper will go in every budget basic fork from Fox from now on, like the AWL fork that's for bike packing. So the Z2 and the new Z1, basically they're the same, they just have a little bit better of a chassis. So there is no reason to take that damper apart because basically it's a Z2 damper. And while I was putting this fork back together, which is precisely the same as the Fox 36 Rhythm and the old Z1, I did discover one massive improvement for the new Z1. So when I was putting the lower legs back together right here, I was like, wow, that was really smooth. And watch the upper tubes. Basically one of the massive improvements for 2024, we have some really, really good bushing tolerances Basically, the fork feels like butter. I have no plans of ever buying or riding a Z2 fork, but let me know what you think about the damping and how that fork rides if you have one. So this is a hybrid channel, 50% nerd and 50% riding. So let's do some sand pilgriming and get this fork on the bike. The bolt thread holes have been removed from the arch, I'm guessing to save some money. The Z1 coming in at $579 does not have all the features of the Super Z. 
that is like 50% of the price and you're getting 50% of the features. But in my opinion, they're both super cool with that M arch. Someone commented on my last video. He's like, dude, buy some tools. You're such a hack. So I was like, totally. I went to Harbor Freight, got this electric ratchet so I could work even faster. Now, as soon as I got that new tool, my generic knockoff park tool bike stand basically broke with the bike on it. But never complain about your cheap stuff. Always fix your cheap stuff and don't complain about it. Same as the previous model, it is a 180 millimeter direct mount, so you're gonna need your little adapter from your old fork. The fork has some really subtle logos that are stickered on, so you can basically rebadge this thing or murder it out. That M arch is an absolute boss, and the price tag, you can't complain about that sub $600 range in 2024. Pushing on the fork up and down, it's buttery smooth, but you can hear that cavitated damper noise when you're pushing on it. The parking lot jump test tells me this is a super linear fork. Linear means it's easy to press down. So my first hawk to flat, let me know that I did not have the correct setup. When you bottom a Fox fork out, it lets you know with a loud clap. So I basically use the recommended settings on the back of the fork for my setup. Nothing fancy quite yet. Stay tuned later in another video for that. But good news is the rail damper basically put that thing to the middle and you can get rowdy on this fork. That reinforced e-bike chassis I can't really notice the difference quite yet. It is super, super plush, linear, easy to press down, excellent riding trail fork. It's almost like a coil fork, even though it's an air fork. Like, look how plush this thing is. It's incredible. So if you're gonna do anything but normal trail riding, you're gonna need to add like 10 to 15 PSI from the recommended setting. I suspect Marzocchi has made a super entry level friendly fork and if you want to do big jumps in this guy it's going to need a whole bunch of setup. So I'm going to add like 15 psi to the fork and take it out. Now interestingly the fork feels like an absolute wall and it's no longer plush near the end of the stroke. A lot of entry level forks like the RockShock Yari, Domain suffer from this type of issue. When you're dealing with a fork like this, it's basically add 10, subtract 5, add 15, subtract 10, 5 psi at a time on the air pressure until it doesn't feel like an absolute wall of resistance. I was able to dial it in after like two runs. So the new Z1 summed up, this is what happened. Fox said, hey, there's too much crossover with the old Marzocchi Z1 to our 36. So Marzarki's like, yeah, no worries. We'll just chop the nuts off this fork and make it a super entry level fork that no one can shred on. Now, don't get me wrong. This is an excellent mellow trail riding fork. It just doesn't like to get rowdy with its downgraded damper. I don't blame Fox or Marzocchi. They got to get rid of the crossover. Now to verify the Z1 being downgraded, I put it on the most expensive rear suspension bike I've ever been on. With the Z1 hanging off the front of a Yeti with a push coil, it was definitely out of place, but it is an excellent fork when your wheels are on the ground and you're just cruising. The Z1's mid-stroke support is completely acceptable on the steeper sections. That's not the problem. When things get really chunky and rowdy, the fork starts to fall apart. So with the fork's damper holding it back, I was unable to verify if the chassis is stiffer because I couldn't really push the fork. Now you have to watch this video here because this new Z1 rides almost identical to the old Z1 coil fork, which is really interesting. 